anti-Semitism. You can follow our future rallies, marches, and events to make sure that New York City is um, waking up to what is going on in Crown Heights and our website, fightantisemitism.org. And this is what I have to talk about the imagination of my organization, which began with the news of the women's march affiliation with Farrakhan became apparent. And a lot of Jewish women broke off from the women's march and decided to found our own organization where we could be heard, seen, and created. And one of the things we created was the Jewish caucus with the intention that we have a professional bipartisan Jewish caucus in America, which we don't have. We have a Jewish caucus, we have a Jewish caucus, we have a black caucus, but we don't have a Jewish caucus. A non-partisan, bipartisan, congressional Jewish caucus. So that was the reason that I brought forward. And then as all of the um, crimes started to just explode in Crown Heights, and day after day there was no coverage in our mainstream media, there was no coverage uh, by the mayor, uh, by, there was no press um, re re releases, there was no events right in front of City Hall, which should have started on day one. It's incredible to think about it, but Chuck Schumer, the New York State Senator, the New York State Senator, who lives one neighborhood from Crown Heights, has never once mentioned the crimes that are occurring in Crown Heights, which include bricks thrown at men's heads, which include belts used on men's faces, which includes um, gangs jumping 21-year-old Hasids just walking on their way to work. So the reason we are here is to demand that the New York State, which we ha now have Governor Cuomo filling in for our absentee mayor, and the reason he has to fill in is because the mayor has spent eight hours a month doing his job. Seven hours. Seven. Seven hours. But who's counting? Thank you to Governor Cuomo for doing your job and bringing the state police down to our city. Thank you to the New York police who have done an amazing job. Thank you. The New York, the New York Police Department has made this event so possible. They went beyond every step of the way. Thank you, New York City Police Department. Thank you to the fire department who expedited when we found out that the generator needed a little extra permission. Expedited in like two hours. Thank you to the fire department of New York City. And thank you to the parks and recreation department. Every single community organization in this city, including all of the communities in Crown Heights, and I'm talking black community. I'm talking the Latino. I'm talking the West Indian. I'm talking Jewish, Asian, white, whatever, foreigners that just started living in Crown Heights two months ago. Everybody spoke to me. Nobody wants this. It's dangerous for everybody's children. It's not just dangerous for Jewish Hasidim and visibly Jewish people. It's dangerous for all of the Jewish community and it's dangerous for all of the communities right there. Believe me when I say, they might, we might not see all those communities out today, but when I walked through Crown Heights and I gave our flyers out and I told people, everybody wanted to have this happen. So you have to believe that. We're not isolated. We are not isolated. We are just being ignored by the mayor and the media. I don't know why the mayor doesn't want to talk about it. I don't know why the, the mayor doesn't want to name and call it what it is. It's anti-Semitism. It's not 
white supremacy in New York City. If you look at the crimes going on in Crown Heights, there's not a single white supremacist living in Crown Heights. And there's not a single crime committed by a white supremacist in Crown Heights. So call it what it is. We have an issue. The black community does not want it. The Jewish community does not want it. And if Mayor de Blasio doesn't call it what it is, we're not going to move through this crisis. We have to get to the other side. New York City has never been about this. New York City has always been about inclusivity, diversity. Everybody is happy and everybody is welcome here. LGBT. Whatever gender you are, whatever race you are, whatever color you are, wherever you came from, wherever you last got off the ship, you are welcome here. And this is how we need to keep it. So we have to keep the faith, and even if we're not being covered, know that everybody in our city wants this to be covered. It's very, very important to all of us. It's in our hearts, and I know it's, a, it's scaring a lot of people. My mother said yesterday to me, we fear another Hitler. That's crazy. This is not, it, this is not the way New York City should ever feel. And the last thing I want to say is I want to give huge thanks to Chaim Deutsch for coming out today. Thank you, Councilman Chaim Deutsch. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Who's the other councilman? Eric Ulrich. Thank you so much to Councilman Eric Ulrich. Thank you to, to um, Eye on Anti-Semitism and Campaign for Truth in London who are now having a sister rally in London to hold their own mayor and their media accountable for reporting anti-Semitic crimes so that we can get to the bottom of this crisis. And they are live streaming it. We are live streaming this. We are going to be on the news. And we are going to keep raising our voice in New York City. This is, this is step one. This is day one. Welcome to day one. Thank you so much. Sorry, we are also, as I, we know, proud Americans, and we're going to now sing the national anthem. Let me welcome Rona Melsky. I'd like to thank everybody for being here, and thank you for letting me sing this. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we held At the twilight's last gleaming Whose bright stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight For the ramparts we watch Were so gallant My name is Brian Live, and I'm going to be emceeing today's event. Uh, I'm going to be bringing up a lot of amazing speakers in the next hour that are very dedicated to fighting anti-Semitism here in New York and also throughout America. Uh, so the first person I'd like to bring up is going to be Doe Feiken. Let me tell you a little bit about Doe before I bring him up. Um, 
So New Yorkers definitely know who Dove is, as he's not only the founder of Americans Against Anti-Semitism, but he's also served in the New York State Assembly for 36 years as an outspoken advocate for his constituency, battling discrimination, anti-Semitism, Holocaust denial, and human rights violations. His career began as an activist who fought for Jewish immigration from Russia before the Iron Curtain had fallen. Like one of our, two of our speakers, Mort Klein and Councilman Deutsch, he is also the son of Holocaust survivors. So we're gonna have three speakers in a row here who are children of survivors of one of the worst atrocities mankind has ever experienced. And here they are today, appealing for us to come together as Jews, for us to come together as non-Jews to make sure that history does not repeat itself. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dove. And by the way, uh, we also have a superstar here that all of you are going to be excited to listen to, none other than Sid Rosenberg. Well, we'll be on soon. First of all, very, very clear message. We're right before the holiday, very, very serious time of the year for the Jewish people. It's right before Rosh Hashanah. It's right before the Day of Atonement. Very, very special period. So we have a very clear message to our enemies, to those who want to hurt, 